Shalom, shalom, YouTube, shalom viewer, Hebrew homeboy here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching. Uh, today's video, as you can probably guess by the title, will um, will be very interesting, to say the least. Today, I will cover three uh, three very controversial topics that um, I am presented with very often by these Afrocentric, self-professed Hebrews who deny the fact that my people are indeed Israelites. Uh, being the uh, the indigenous Americans and so oftentimes as I am um, you know making these videos or or just you know um, writing out different posts on on social media I am often confronted by these uh, self-professed Hebrews who deny the fact that my people are Israelites and we or rather I I myself and various other people who believe as I do are continuously um, challenged with with various various verses throughout the Bible, and we are asked to prove our position, to prove our arguments, while explaining away or may ma making sense of uh, these verses, which they claim uh, actually debunk the idea that my people are in fact Israelites, and what they will tell you is that um, these verses debunk this idea that my people are Israelites precisely because, according to them, these verses um, denote the fact that the, or the, uh, the ancient Israelites were uh, Negroes. And so they will take you to these verses and they will say, well, because your people don't fit uh, the description that these verses are allegedly giving of the Israelites, um, then uh, evidently your people can not be Israelites. And so as, as skewed as that, that um, form of thinking is, this particular video isn't so much going to touch on the fact that um, the original Israelites were black or isn't so much going to explain how it is that our people, or rather my people, are Israelites despite that we are not black. Uh, as it is more so really going to just um, quite simply debunk these uh, these these uh, skewed or completely misinterpreted uh, explanations that they they have of uh, these verses in question. Uh, in short, I am going to debunk their claims. I am going to delve into these verses. I will read them out for you and give you the proper interpretation of these verses so that I can uh, further demonstrate how these uh, Afrocentric self-professed Hebrews have no argument. They go into these, they go into the Bible uh, just frantically searching for any verse that they believe uh, disqualifies my people as Israelites and in doing so they invent these completely ridiculous off-the-wall theories using Bible, uh, Bible verses that they completely rip out of context. And so I'm gonna go, I'm going to address three of these verses because uh, honestly I want to just make this video as short as possible. I know you guys have things to do. I'm gonna try to make it under 30 minutes but um, I I'm not gonna go into every single verse. In fact I'm going to make um i guess various parts to this particular uh uh topic and um i will make uh, various other videos addressing various other verses that they also use but today's video will address three of the most popular and um again i'm gonna delve into this and I I'm, I'm i'm gonna address these verses because quite honestly this this video is long overdue i am so tired of of seeing these verses uh, just flung around social media and used to essentially harass uh, the people that do believe uh, that the Native Americans and, and the so-called Hispanics are Israelites. And we are harassed with these verses because uh, they will tell you that because these verses indicate that um, the ancient Israelites were black. Again, according to them, these verses indicate this. But... Um, they will say that because these verses indicate that ancient Israel was black, then my people are disqualified because we don't fit that description. And so they will tell us things like, um, you know, we aren't fit to be Israelites because we are not black. Or they will call us heathens for not being black. And they will continually reference these verses and uh, just throw in our face this idea that we are less than because we are not 
as dark as they are and they will use these verses in the Bible to to uh to insult us to abuse us and to just basically harass us and so again i'm going to cover these these verses because it's just it's just long overdue it's it's time that i debunk these verses it's um it's just very childish how they will take these verses and and run off with them and just um you know time and time again just regurgitate these these doctrines without caring to to you know research behind these these teachings and and figuring out for themselves whether or not it is in fact uh, biblically accurate uh, just because in their minds these verses disqualify my people as Israelites they will run out in social media and just paste these 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 ridiculous teachings everywhere and it's stupid I'm sick of it you're stupid for believing these things and um and again, you just you have no no reason to to um, believe what you do, honestly, other than just pure cognitive dissonance. You have nothing, no thing. There is no verse in the Bible that disqualifies my people as Israelites. You can look all night. Uh, you can search your entire life. It isn't there. It isn't there. And I will prove that with this video. So enough of my ranting. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and get into the lesson. And uh, just please, 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 please pay attention. Listen, you, you say whatever you want to say at the end of the video. Call me whatever you want to call me. Uh, go into the conversation. Vent off after the video is done. But if you are genuinely, if you are genuinely seeking truth and clarity of the scriptures, then watch this video with a completely unbiased mindset and you tell me if I am truly uh, just um, falsifying this information, if I am coming up with ridiculous doctrines. You tell me how exactly I am ripping these verses out of context and correct me, correct me according to the script. Don't just call me a spick. And I mean, you just count how many times you can read the word spick uh, in my videos in the comment section. Just do that on your own time. But I I'm being serious. Don't just disagree with me for the sake of disagreeing with me, okay? If you feel that I am presenting false information, you correct me. You go into this comment section and you say, this is where you messed up. This, this is what you got wrong. This is how you misinterpreted uh, said verse. Correct me, okay? Do it uh with scripture, do it properly. I don't care how much you disagree with me. If you truly, truly do um, disagree with me and, and you're about truth and you're a truth seeker, okay, watch this video and you show me how I'm the one that's wrong, okay? You show me how these verses aren't saying what I am saying that they're saying, okay? And I'm, I'm again, this isn't that I'm saying it. This is just something that is just, it, it's clear. It's clear in the scripture and it's actually so sad that I have to make a video like this because again, these the, the arguments that I am confronted with, they don't stem from these, um, these uh, you know, these uh, incredibly uh, ambiguous or just these, these verses that are completely hard to understand and so you have to be this completely learned individual uh, to be able to, you know, um, uh, you know, decipher the, the the symbolism behind said verse or anything. It's it's not from some mysterious verse or some 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 difficult verse to comprehend. No, the reason these these various doctrines exist is simply, and in all honesty, okay, I'm not I'm not trying to insult anyone. I'm not trying to um, you know, uh, just anger anyone or 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 you know, take away from from anyone's research or intelligence. I'm just, I'm just being honest, okay. The reason these arguments exist is, is, is just, in all honesty, simply due to a, 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 um, an issue in reading comprehension. These people have poor reading comprehension, and so this is why they misinterpret these verses as badly as they do. And I'm not just saying this. You will see this in this video. You will see um, what exactly I mean when I say that it is due to a, a, a just poor reading comprehension. These people don't know what they're reading. As much as they tell you that they know the Bible, believe me, they do not. And I will show you with this video. But with that said, I'm just gonna go ahead and get into the lesson. That's enough of my ranting. Um, uh, let's go to the book. Okay guys, so the first verses that I'm going to be addressing are in Isaiah chapter 3 verses 16 through 17 specifically and the reason I'm going to be addressing this verse first is because I actually touched upon this uh, very briefly 
in my previous video. However, I do feel like I could have expounded a little better on these verses because some people did have some questions afterwards, although I did uh, perfectly establish my point. But um, again, this is one of the verses that are, are just widely ripped out of context and I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of, of, of having to repeatedly answer these questions on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on the YouTube comment section. I'm sick of it. So I'm going to go ahead and address this and I'm going to show how wrong these people interpret this verse. And again, it's all out of desperation to disqualify my people as being Israelites. And I'm, I'm telling you, they don't have such a verse. There is no verse out there that will disqualify my people as Israelites. So just get over it, man. But... With that said, I'm going to go ahead and read this verse. So, okay, so Isaiah chapter 3. Okay, we were already here. 16 through 17. Let me get a close up. Okay, here we go. Okay, so the verse reads Moreover, the Lord saith. Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and want long eyes, walking and minting as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head, the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Okay, so now the part that we're going to focus on is right here. The Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion okay now I'm gonna pan the camera the camera back over to myself and I'm gonna go ahead and expound on this a bit deeper okay so if you've noticed this uh, alleged curse is not listed in the uh, list of curses in Deuteronomy 28 and so I need you to pay attention to this because this is actually very significant. When we read Isaiah chapter 3, okay, and we begin from verse 1, okay, we are given the context of the following verses and we are able to see just uh, what exactly uh, this verse is referring to. Now, what they will tell you is that this verse uh describes a curse that will plague the women of israel and what they will point to is a condition predominantly seen amongst african-american women and this condition being one that causes their hair to fall off and so they will say that isaiah 3 is actually a description of this uh supposed curse and that <clears throat> the reason uh, african-american women have this condition is precisely because they are being plagued by this curse which they say causes their hair to fall off and they will add that in order for uh, women to be identified as authentic Israelites they would have to fit this condition in other words their hair has to be falling off in order for um, us to definitively say or prove that uh, you know this particular woman is uh, an Israelite and so again this is ju it's just a ridiculous teaching it really really truly is a ridiculous teaching because that's not at all what the verse is saying and though it was essentially a curse what they need to understand is that you can't just uh, read some passage from the Bible rip it out of context and apply it to yourself today okay context is very important I am so sick of people out there saying oh you you, you got to read the verse in context and the very first thing that these same people do is rip the verse this badly out of context but uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and read verse 1 I'm gonna put it on the screen but I'm gonna go into verse one so that we can get the context, so that we can see what the what these two verses are actually talking about. Okay, and so verse one reads, "For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the state and the staff, the whole state of bread and the whole state of water." And so, the very first thing that I want to point out here is that it made a specific reference to Jerusalem. And Judah 
that means it is referring to the southern kingdom specifically okay specifically it is referring to the southern kingdom you can this is from verse one okay but you can actually go ahead and read from the the chapter prior and you can see that it is still for a for a good portion okay for a for a good few chapters it is specifically referring to the kingdom of judah only okay and so when we go down to verse 16 reading from verse 1 it is very easy to see who these daughters of zion are who are the daughters of zion spoken of in verse 16 hmm, i don't know could it be the the kingdom of judah that was referenced in verse 1 uh probably so i'm as we continue reading uh, excuse me i'm let me adjust my okay all right so this entire chapter is referring to the kingdom of judah only and then we go down to verse 16 and it mentions the daughters of zion come on people put two and two together don't just inject uh, the northern kingdom in here it is speaking re specifically about the kingdom of judah and so my point in all this is to say that these people will tell us that um or well yeah tell me tell everyone who believes that native americans are israelites they will tell us that um we are not uh israelites and one way to determine this is through our women and to see them um and see that they do they are not plagued by this supposed curse and then they will tell you that they have to fit this description they have to fit the description and their hair has to be falling off because they have to be plagued by this by the supposed curse and they will take you here to isaiah 3 to justify that teaching but then when we go to isaiah 3 and you and you apply this literally because that's what they're doing because i'm going to give you an alternate explanation right now but if you go to Isaiah 3 and you take this verse literally and you apply it to, to you apply it to our people today, okay, then you would have to agree that this particular curse would only fall on the women from the kingdom of Judah, whoever they might be, okay? You cannot say that um, the entire nation of Israel or all the women from the nation of Israel have to fall under this supposed curse when it, it's not saying that it's only referencing the kingdom of judah and you can't take this verse rip it out of context and say that all israelite women have to have to uh you know fit this description because again one it's not saying that it's not referencing all of the women from the nation of israel but additionally okay it's not a damn curse that was placed on the women of israel i mean in a sense it was but what you are reading here people is what is what was going to happen to not just women but to the kingdom of judah okay during the time that they were going to be invaded by um by babylon what you are reading is essentially a description by the most high um of what he was going to do to the kingdom of judah for their disobedience so he was going to have their land invaded he was going to uh have their women um you know lose their hair he was going to have them smell he was going to take away their jewelry as it continues on to say and he was also going to um you know do a few things to the men but um my point is that he is describing, okay, the things that were going to be happening to the kingdom of, of Judah as they are having their land invaded, okay? He was going to send a nation against them, and these are the things that were going to happen to that kingdom at that time. People, damn, man, it's not a curse that was placed on the nation of israel i mean i don't know i don't know what else to say it just doesn't say that it doesn't say that uh well basically what it says in deuteronomy 28 that these curses would follow you until you're regathered etc etc it doesn't say anything like that all it's saying and if you again this 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 is a continuation from the previous chapter so if you just read from the previous chapter and you and you continue reading you're going to read about how um, they're going to have their land invaded and they're, they're basically they're just going to be destroyed as a people And then these are the things that are going to be happening while the invasion is taking place It is not something that was meant to affect Future generations. I mean it just doesn't say that it doesn't say that anywhere This is not some some description that women have to fit in order to prove themselves as, as authentic Israelites, okay? 
It's just not saying that. It really, it really doesn't. It's referencing the destruction of the kingdom of Judah during the time that they were being invaded. That's it. That's that's it. It doesn't talk about the northern kingdom and their women and how their women are also going to be losing their hair. It is only specifically for a few chapters. I am think from chapter 1. From chapter 1 of Isaiah to like a good, a good portion of it is only referring to the kingdom of Judah only. So my point is this. If you're going to read this verse and apply it to yourself, to your women today, then you would have to agree. If you're going to take that verse literal, you have to agree that it would only apply to the women from the kingdom of Judah because only they are being referenced. It's not a verse regarding the nation of Israel. It isn't. You are injecting that into the scripture. It is only referring to the kingdom of Judah. And as such, if this... If this were in fact a curse that still applies today, then you would have to agree that it is only a curse that applies to whoever the women of the southern, southern kingdom are. It only applies to the women from the kingdom of Judah. Only. It can only be that if that is what the verse says. The verse is specifically referring to them. You can't, you can't, you can't just inject other people in there, okay, when the Bible doesn't say that. And again, it's just, it's just like, it's not a curse. It's not a curse that was, again, that was meant to be placed on future generations of Israelites if they, if they are disobedient. It doesn't say that. The reason it's saying, I, I, I explained it, honestly, and it's really just that simple. The reason it says what it says is because they, they were going to have their land destroyed. These people were going to be ravaged. They were going to be invaded. Their war was going to happen. So these things were going to take place. It's not saying that these things would follow them uh, for future generations. It's not saying that. And the, those particular curses, again, are very explicitly outlined in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Those are the curses that says these, this will follow you for generations. Okay, that is what you have to look to to see what the general cur the, the generational curses rather are. Okay, don't just don't 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 rip Isaiah three out of context because that's what you're doing. This is not some verse that women have to fit. It's just it's it's so so stupid. It's so stupid and it's not what it's saying. And I want you to show me that all women have to fit this description. I want you to show me that that this is in fact a curse that still applies today. And I want you to make it make sense. I want you to show me how it is exactly that women have to fit this description in order to be an Israelite when it was specifically referring to the kingdom of Judah during a very specific time period. I want you to prove that. Don't just give me some stupid stuff, but make it clear and make it understandable, okay? That this verse still applies today to whoever the women of Israel are, okay? Prove it. And with that said, with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next verse that I want to address. Wow, and let me let me let me just say this this one here man this one here oh my god they will take you here they will take you here all day long and they will tell you they will shove this in your face and tell you how this is definitive proof of who the israelites are and aren't and before I go on, let me just say that there are actually very many genuine brothers and sisters who also interpret the verse uh, the same way, the way that I am about to address it. And uh, I do feel that these brothers and sisters are confused. I do feel that there is a, a just a very, very widespread misconception regarding this verse. And again, um, to the brothers and sisters, I don't mean to offend you in any way. Um, but I do believe that you are misinterpreting this verse. It, you, I really do believe that, um, and again, not not because I believe it to be so, or not because I simply believe it to be so, but because I can see what is written, that I am able to realize just how badly this verse is taken out of context. But with that said, the verse I am referring to is, of course, none other than Amos chapter 9 verse 7 man amos chapter 9 verse 7 let's get into it so amos chapter 9 verse 7 is right here let me zoom in 
Okay, and it reads, Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Hath not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaftor, and the Syrians from Kerr? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pan the camera back over to me. Okay, so Amos chapter 9, verse 7. Again, it's very easy to see why these people interpret this verse the way they do. Um, but quite frankly, it's just, it is, it, it's incorrect. Um, these people read over this verse and they will tell you that when you read, are ye not like the Ethiopians unto me? Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me rather? Um, they will say that this is actually implying that the Israelites are as dark to him, are as dark to the Most High as the Ethiopians are. In other words, uh, the Most High is basically saying right here, aren't you black people? He's basically saying, according to them, that um, Israelites are a dark race of people and he indicates this by comparing them to the Ethiopians, whom we all know were a dark race people. And so they will say that Amos 9-7 is a surefire way to, 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 to know or to tell who the true Israelites are today because according to them, it lets you know that uh, Israelites were, were dark-skinned. And again, it's just an incorrect way to interpret this verse, completely incorrect. How can you account for the just i mean ridiculous change of topic honestly that it would be because when you read from amos chapter 9 verse 1 this is basically describing a uh, the destruction of israel he's basically saying that no matter what they do they will not be able to escape his judgment and so i mean you could go ahead and just read amos 1 through 6 amos chapter 9 1 through 6 to see what i'm what i'm talking about but um here he is explaining to them that no matter what they do, they won't be able to escape his judgment. And in the middle of his speech, he's just going to drop the fact that, uh, uh, you know, they, they, that they were black people. He's just going to be like, oh, yeah, uh, no matter what you do, you won't be able to escape me. But by the way, did you guys know you, that you were all black? Aren't you black people to me? I mean, wh why? For the love of God, why would, why, why would he just drop the fact that Israelites are black people in the middle of him telling them that they are going to be punished for what they've been doing and that they won't be able to escape this this judgment i mean make it make sense don't just tell me that that verse is is expl is is you know uh relaying the fact that israel was a dark-skinned nation and then give no explanation as to why it would be there to begin with i mean how does that fit within the context of the chapter what was he saying that would cause him to mention that fact it is a complete misinterpretation of the verse, and this is really what his what he's saying. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put the the, the, the verse right up on the screen. But uh, Amos chapter nine verse seven reads, "Are you not as children of Ethiopians unto me?" So the very first thing that I want to point out is that there is a comparison being made to the Ethiopians. But the question is, in what context? In what context are they being compared to the Ethiopians? To their skin color? How? How How? How did you arrive to that conclusion? What in this chapter is, is, is referencing, uh, you know, their skin tone or, or has anything to do with skin complexion? Yes, there is a comparison being made to the Ethiopians here. But I submit to you that the comparison being made is not in regard to their skin color but rather their behavior. Yes, in other words, he isn't saying, are you not like the Ethiopians done to me because you are as dark as they are. He is saying, are you not like the Ethiopians done to me in the sense that you are no better to me than the Ethiopians are. You are acting like heathens. This He's basically explaining to them why they are being uh, punished or judged in the way that he was just explaining six verses prior he is basically saying that yes they are his chosen seed but because they are behaving the way that they are in 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 that regard 
they are no more different to him than the Ethiopians are. They are heathens. They are acting like heathens, like the Ethiopians. And in that sense, that is how he is comparing them to the Ethiopians. In fact, if you carefully read that same verse, Amos chapter 9, verse 7, um, you can see that there are actually three comparisons being made here. One to the Ethiopians, the other to the Philistines, and the other to the Syrians. Where? Uh, let's read the verse again. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt, okay, question mark, and the Philistines from Kaftor and the Syrians from Ker? In other words, in other, when the first question that he asks, did I not bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? That is a rhetorical question. Yes, he did. What he means to say is, I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt just like I brought the Philistines out of Kaftor and just like I brought the Syrians out of Ker. So the fact that I brought you up out of Egypt isn't necessarily anything special because I also brought these people out of uh, these other places. And that's basically what he's saying here. He's basically saying because you behave that way that you are, you are no different to me than a common heathen. That is the comparison being made and that is the comparison that he is giving here to the Ethiopians. He is basically saying that the children of Israel um, at that point in time because of how they were behaving are no different to him than the Ethiopians because both of them are acting heathenistic. That is the true comparison being made here and it has nothing to do with skin complexion. Please, again, please make it fit. Please tell me why in the middle of his of this speech okay he's just going to again just drop the just what remind them that they are a nation of black people why would he be comparing um the children of israel to the ethiopians in regard to their skin complexion why 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 answer the why don't just tell me uh yeah that, that's what it means he's compared he, he's, he's saying that they're as, as dark as the ethiopians don't just tell me that like explain it and make it make sense why would he say that at that time uh given what he was talking about make it make sense it, it doesn't fit it's not what it's saying and uh it just you just have to stop man you have to stop just frantically searching through the bible looking for whatever verse uh you believe uh disqualifies my people as israelites read this read the scriptures okay Read it, read it in, in honesty and in truth, and you will be able to see that that is, that is the comparison here being made. They are, he, he is comparing them to a heathenistic nation because they are acting heathenistic. It has nothing to do with compa I'm comparing them to black people because he, he's just reminding them of how black they are. So just stop it. Just stop it. You have, you have no argument. You have no argument. Amos 9-7 has nothing to do with any skin complexion. Um... It just isn't okay and again if you disagree with me then explain explain it it's make it make sense explain why amos 97 is referring to skin complexion just out of the blue okay out of everything he was saying why would he just out of nowhere address the fact that they are black people why would that be the correct interpretation make it make sense okay but I mean, if you if you are just honest with yourself, I know you saw it. I know that you see the compare the true comparison being made here, and it has nothing to do with skin complexion. These self-professed Hebrews, Afrocentric self-professed Hebrews, have no argument. Okay, they don't. But with that said, uh, I'll be moving on to the next verse. And so, ladies and gentlemen, last but not least, I bring you to Isaiah chapter eleven, verse verses eleven through twelve. Uh, and let me just say that out of the three verses that I address today, this one is probably the most ridiculous. The teachings that stem from this particular verse are, in my opinion, the most, um, the most, just the most incorrect. The, the, this verse is the most misinterpreted or uh, actually, I, I'm not going to say it's the most because a lot of them are, are pretty badly misinterpreted, but, um, this one here is one that many people take and will use to denote the idea that the uh, the Northern Kingdom is still in the Eastern world today 
and that in fact only the southern kingdom only the kingdom of judah was scattered throughout the world and they and again even though they have they have as much as they will talk to you about having uh two witnesses and and needing to be um needing to 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 have your your doctrine supported with you know various other verses or whatever um as much as they will rant about this they can find no other verse anywhere in the bible that even remotely implies the idea that only judah was scattered throughout the four corners of the year there is no verse saying anything like this and they will take you here if you hear them teaching that they will take you here actually i think there's another one but i i'll, I'll address that one later in, in a different in another video but um my point is that they will use this verse this is the main one they will take you here and they will say that this verse is saying that only the kingdom of judah was scattered throughout the world and therefore uh native americans can't be israelite because they are not where they are supposed to be which is in the eastern world uh which again they say is explained in 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 by this verse they say that this verse is actually the verse that explains the fact that um the entire northern kingdom is still in the eastern world and therefore uh they, because of that they will say that um you know native americans are not israelites and so again this verse is just being misinterpreted and it again it's just it's it's due to a simple case of poor reading comprehension but uh with that said okay so this particular verse is actually a future prophecy that um details the regathering of the israelites and so when we read verse 11 we read about these places that um according to these afrocentric hebrews they will say that these are in fact the places where the northern kingdom is today and um i'm just gonna go ahead and read it it says um and it shall come verse 11 and it shall come to pass in that day that the lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Patros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And they will tell you that these are the places where the northern kingdom are. Question, where does it say that? Where does it say that only the northern kingdom are in these places? Because I do see that it's saying that Israelites will be gathered from these uh, places that it mentions. But where where is it saying that only the northern kingdom is is located in these places what this people what what this verse is simply saying is that when this time period happens when 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 it is time to regather the israelites from these places then then well that's basically what it's saying it's it's saying that when it's time to regather the israelites they will be gathered from these places in other words some of the israelites are going to be gathered from the places that it mentions and honestly there is there isn't really that much to say about it because it's really honestly that simple just read it and all, all it's saying the only thing that it's saying is that when it is time to regather the israelites they will be gathered some of them will be gathered from these places it has nothing to, it, it, like it, at all it, it, it is not saying anywhere in here that only the northern kingdom are in these places but they believe that simply because um their desperation to to have this some some verse that disqualifies my people uh drives them to invent these ridiculous off the wall doctrines and uh, i mean honestly that's all there is to say about it um they're misinterpreting the verse they're misinterpreting the verse and um Again, it's just, it's ridiculous. By the way, I did change rooms. Uh, okay, sorry guys, I do apologize. Um, my camera died in the middle of me speaking. So, uh, I have to now switch to audio. But, um, as I was saying, uh, okay, first let me get back to where I was. Please excuse me guys, I was in Isaiah chapter 11 11 through 12 here we go okay and so as i was saying right here verse 11 let me zoom in okay and so as we can see 
all verse 11 is really saying is that uh, when the time comes to regather Israel, he will regather them from from where? From Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. All it's saying, all that it's saying, without injecting any preconceived notions, all this verse is saying is that Israelites will be gathered from these places. And then we take it down here to verse 12, okay? And it goes on to say, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and he shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And so, all it's saying here is that the well, okay. Well, first, before I explain it, the reason uh, these people get confused is because it says here, and I shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth and so they will tell you that this is saying that only Judah is scattered throughout the four corners of the earth because of because of how the verse ends it says and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth and so again this this teaching stems from poor reading comprehension because here we see that Verse 12 clearly says, And shall assemble, okay, the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah. So what, what these Afrocentrists want to do is they want to separate where it says, gather together the dispersed of Israel and the dispersed of Judah. They, they, they want to separate that. As if I can't clearly see the word and right here. And so the reason I mention that is because, um, oh, and by the, I'm sorry guys, because I know this is really remedial information, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and pull up the definition for and, which is a conjunction, okay? And here's what it says. It says that the word and is used as a function word to indicate connection or addition, especially of items within the same class or type. Used to join sentence elements of the same grammatical rank or function. And so the reason I bring that up is because when we read right here, let me go ahead and zoom back in, okay? When we read, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations and assemble and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah, what they fail to realize is that the word and right here is literally, it's, I mean, it's its so simple, but that's thats just what's happening. The word and here joins these two sentences. In other words, it's not saying, it's not saying that um, the outcasts of Israel and the, the you know, the, the dispersed of, of Judah will be, um, you know, will be gathered from one place and uh, Judah from another in the sense that only Judah is is scattered throughout the world, but uh, Israel isn't. I mean, that is quite a stretch. That is quite a, 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 a claim to, to pull out from this one particular verse when it very clearly here um, says that he shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from where from the four corners of the earth. This verse is literally saying the exact opposite of what they claim that it says. What this verse is saying is that both the outcasts of Israel and the dispersed of Judah will be gathered together from the four corners of the earth. It is not saying that only Judah is dispersed. I mean, seriously, it, it just isn't. The reason they believe that is simply because they, 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 they lack reading comprehension. They have poor reading comprehension and they do not interpret this verse properly simply because they, they, they do not understand it. It's just honestly that simple. It isn't saying, again, verse 11, verse 11 all, all it's saying is that Israelites will be gathered from these respective places that it mentions and then it goes on to say that not only will they be gathered uh, regathered from those places but in fact they will be gathered from the four corners of the earth who is they the Israelites the entire nation why do I say that because it it, it literally says it right here in verse 12 
it says that he will set up an ensign for the nations and he shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah. Both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom will be regathered from the four corners of the earth. It actually says that. And they want, I mean, this little comma here, this little comma here trips them up so bad. I cannot believe that they, from, from this one verse, they get the idea that only Judah was scattered throughout the planet. It does not say that. And honestly, there is, there's nothing really more than I can say regarding this particular verse because it's, it's honestly that simple. It, it was like, it, it never, nowhere in this entire book can you can you can you find any verse that even remotely implies the idea that only Judah was scattered? And again, this verse certainly isn't saying it. It is not saying that only Judah was dispersed. In fact, as I just explained, it is saying the exact opposite. It is saying that that uh, he shall assemble, okay, the outcasts of Israel, and. And he will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah. From where? From the four corners of the earth. I mean, honestly, it's really that simple. It's just not saying what, what, what these fools are out there claiming that it says. And again, if you do not believe me, if you do not agree with me, then all you have to do is explain how, how this verse is denoting the idea that only Judah was scattered throughout the planet. Make it make sense. Don't just tell me that that is what it's saying. How is it saying that? Why would it say that when in fact, if I take you over to Deuteronomy 28, okay, which is something they will always go to, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go down to verse 15. Everyone knows verse 15, it's right here, it says, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses will come upon thee and overtake thee. He is speaking to the entire nation in this verse. And then we go down here to verse uh to verse excuse me very quick to verse twenty three. Excuse me, let me zoom in on this. Verse 23. Okay, so again, keep in mind that uh, Deuteronomy 28 is a list of curses that will befall the entire nation. The, the, the entire nation is under the stipulation. They either obey the Most High and receive blessings or disobey the Most High and receive curses. That is, that, that applies, that stipulation applies for the entire nation. So, the entire nation of Israel is being referenced here in Deuteronomy 28. And when we read Deuteronomy 28, verse 23, we clearly read, no, not 23, excuse me, uh, 22. We can clearly read that it says, The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with inflammation and with extreme burn. Okay, no, it's not 22. Uh, please forgive me. It is, in fact, verse 25. Okay, excuse me. Okay, so verse 25 clearly reads, The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Okay, now keep in mind that he is speaking to the entire nation here. It says, The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Okay, thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth again bear in mind that he is speaking to the entire nation here it says that the entire nation of israel will be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth and that is why when we go back to isaiah chapter 11 it says that they will be regathered from the four corners of the earth because that is how the entire nation was scattered okay the for the love of god for the last time the kingdom of judah is not the only one to be scattered throughout the planet stop saying that okay stop lying to people that is not true and so with that said, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I do feel like I provided sufficient information to establish my point. And again, 
these were only three of the most popular verses that these people used uh, to try and argue against the fact that uh, American Aboriginals are the Israelites of the Bible. And so, again, I, I'm going to be making later videos addressing other verses that they also use. But for now, I think I provided enough information to uh, just completely debunk these these ridiculous teachings that, that I am constantly confronted with. And so, I, again, I made this video so that I, I wouldn't have to uh, explain myself so often. But um, with that, with all of this said, again, uh, again, these people seriously have nothing. They have nothing, nothing, nothing to argue with. And listen, I know there that there are a lot of brothers and sisters out there, a lot of um, yeah, Hispanic or Latinos out there that do believe that they are Israel, who are also harassed by these people. And so a lot of them are actually uh, turned away from this truth because of this this harassment that they endure. From, from these these Afrocentric self-professed Hebrews. And so please listen, if you are watching this video and you are in that position, if you believe that you are an Israelite but you are confused because of the various um, you know doctrines out there floating around and you've been confronted by one of these races, uh, so-called Hebrews, um, and you know, you've been presented with these arguments, and if you are straddling the fence, you are unsure on whether or not, or, or rather unsure about what to believe, I'm begging you, I'm begging you, please contact me. I have been trying to make myself a little more available to my subscribers and also my followers on, on Facebook and Instagram because I, I actually am trying to do this. In my heart, I truly do believe that my people the indigenous people of the Americas are the Israelites of the Bible. This is serious to me. I, I am dead serious about this. And I know that many other people are out there um, also serious about this. And again, they just, they're, they're unsure about what to believe. And I'm begging you if, you, if you are in this position, please reach out to me. Please reach out to me. And before you decide um, not to continue in this belief, let me speak to you and let me clarify some things that you may have encountered because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there is nothing out there. There is nothing, no teaching out there. There is no secret verse out there that anyone has that that actually does disqualify my people as much as they will tell you that it, it is there. It just isn't. I've read through the Bible myself multiple times and listen, it is not in there. They do not have this one verse. They cannot prove that my people are the Israelites, are not the Israelites of the Bible, rather. And quite contrary, you can prove. You can very easily substantiate who the Israelites of the Bible are just by reading the curses of Deuteronomy and by a process of elimination determine which group of people today fit those conditions, okay? And so... Again, they have nothing. Regardless of anything they've told you or anything that, um, you know, that uh, any, any teaching that they may have uh, used against you, I am telling you, these people have nothing. And again, as I keep saying at the end of every single one of my videos, no matter how much they kick against this truth, they cannot, they, they can't stop it. And please, please believe that you are not, um, you know, one of the few people who, who believe this, this, this new teaching. Because uh, unbeknown to most people in America, there are actually thousands of people, thousands of people that are taking on this belief uh, in South America. I might be able to put a video up at the end of this video uh, demonstrating this, but there are actually thousands of people that are taking on this belief and this thing is happening. This thing is happening. It's taking off. It, it's, it's done. The, the, the jig is up, if you will. We are waking up to our true biblical identity and there is nothing that these racist, self-professed, Afrocentric Hebrews can do to stop it, okay? We are the people of the book and there is nothing that you can do to stop this truth from spreading. Deal with it, okay? Shalom. 
Welcome to Iquitos, Peru, right on the Amazon River, deep in the Peruvian rainforest. We're in an area that is close to the region where Colombia and Brazil meet Peru. This is an incredibly isolated place where you can only get to by plane or by boat. Right now, we're on our way to a pier on the river that's going to get us on a boat that's going to take us for 14 hours up this river in order to locate and meet a community known as the Akaukusi. They call themselves the Israelites. The riverboat left us on the dirt pier of Alto Monte. The self-confessed Israelites are a peaceful people, but they are not exactly welcoming to outsiders. We had heard that every Friday they hold a ceremony on the banks of the river. If we played it right, maybe we could film it. But we had to ask for permission and keep a low profile upon arrival just as Ezekiel had taught them to do. The women are on one side, the men on another, and this is the sacrifice that is being offered on this Friday by the Israelites. This is about as close as I think I'll ever get to living in biblical times. Okay guys, I'm going to interject very quickly to explain that this next clip that I'm going to show you is actually uh, pretty interesting. What I want you guys to do is I want you to pay attention to the title of the video as well as who is being interviewed and who is conducting the interview. With that said, here's the clip. Hmm. So let's talk about Mexico let's talk about your nation you know your nation has um, is really connected to the US for many reasons and there's a lot of people immigrating to America and so part of the immigration here is we're seeing a lot of um, different backgrounds coming together into the church into the believers world and um, you know I work with churches that are um, Span that speak a lot of Spanish in Mexico. There, there's a huge influx of that. So tell me, what is the Lord doing there now? What is it that you've seen? Because I know you traveled to some churches. Uh, when you go back to Mexico, you travel back to Mexico every other year, every year. And so you can maybe share a little bit about what you've seen in the churches in Mexico and what's going on there. Um, really, the the gospel started here in America, and um, the gospel went down to Mexico. And we been blessed in different ways from this country, uh, especially the gospel. A, a lot of missionaries and pastors take the gospel to Mexico. Right now, um, the church in Mexico, they don't have maybe the knowledge that churches in, in America have, mm -hmm. but I believe um, soon it's gonna be spread um, uh, the war, especially with uh, Hebrew roots, yeah, and and that's awesome. Because actually, that's a that's actually what's leading into my next question is the Hebrew roots. How did you hear about it? I mean, how did you hear about? I mean, I know you came to America, you found the Lord, you got saved, and you're starting your journey. What what brought you into Hebrew roots? Like, how did you find out about Hebrew roots, and what brought you in? Actually, my wife find out. Uh, she been keeping the Sabbath for twenty and something years, and and I'm gonna tell you the truth. Before I knew my Hebrew roots, I was saved. I was, um, but I was still confused. Mm. I was still confused. Uh, was not direction. Well, I have faith, but I live like a faith without understanding. Mm. Right now, everything I do. I do with understanding. That's mm -hmm. the big difference when we know our Hebrew roots. Oh, yeah. Is uh, really you understand why you're doing this, why this, the feast, why the Shabbat, why we do what we're doing. It's, awesome. it's, it's a big difference. 